Alright guys, let's press on, take a look at another battle report, this time Combined Army. I've been waiting to crank the Combined Army up again, and I've got a separate account on Strike Zone Wotan for the Combined, um, under the name Vol, V-A-U-L as usual, uh, hyphen C-A for Combined Army. So Vol hyphen C-A. Let's just have a little look at how Strike Zone Wotan is going, um, though. You might have um, recently seen this um, this update that Stig Tier 1 has fallen. The Combined Army have taken over. Um, the thing is, though, that uh, although Combined Army and Panoceana have both been posting a lot of games on this platform, it, it keeps going back and, and forward, and uh, at the time of me recording this video, Panoceana are back ahead, even though this announcement's come out. I just want to say um, a number of things about this before I get into the bat rep. Um, first thing to say is that, like I said in the other video about Strike Zone War 10, do not invest yourself emotionally in the outcome of the campaign and get riled up about the results, because they are arbitrary. I was really pleased that Bostria said in the forums recently that they have mechanics behind the scenes which will determine the outcome, and it won't be a matter of, oh, okay, Panoceana have uh, like way more players than everybody else, so they automatically win, and neither will, will it be the case that Toha uh, will win if they have a better win ratio based based on players uh, or anything like that, or outputs for, for, for players, so they've got some other way of doing it, so uh, again, uh, Really, it's it's not going to be under your control, guys. So don't get alarmed if factions seem to be doing something you don't like, or you don't seem to be doing well, or people aren't cooperating with you. Just just don't go there. Um, the next thing I want to say about this campaign is that um, what's hilarious is that when you generate the battle and play your opponent, you guys can choose which theater to play on. So you, maybe it's Toha versus Aleph, and you choose to play on the LaForge mobile shipyard, for example. Um, the strategy at the moment, if you are a combined army player, is to play against an opponent that is not Panoceana, but choose Stig Tier 1 as their platform, because if you win, the combined army get more points towards taking over that area, and if you lose, it just doesn't really matter if, in terms of what you're trying to do. Um, and then, at the same time, they're trying to avoid playing against Panoceana on that particular theatre, because if Pano wins that game, they get points and it swings back the other way and you're just gifting them points. And from the Pano perspective, it's, it's, it's the other way around, right? What really is crazy, though, is that the, this, this, this um, system is trying to promote a bit of a narrative, trying to promote a bit of an in-character sort of uh, participation, but uh, I can't think of anything more jarring or anything to take me more out of the theme and the narrative and the the role play of this than the idea of specifically battling against other factions at the home base of the faction you're trying to defeat so in order to kill the Panoceana forces as a combined army leader you're trying to actually attack a different faction so what the fuck is with that um, one thing they could do is that when you generate a battle on the site and submit a battle report that it gives you the theater based on who was involved. So you cannot pick the theater. So rather than having uh, different missions and theaters that you have to choose to play on, the, the site does it for you. So imagine if you and your buddy Freddy set up a game and you've got your LF and he's got his Ariadna and you know you manage to pull a win and you upload the battle report, the website tells you, tells everybody where the port report has been played after that. Now it means that you can't exactly um, yeah, pre sort of fill in a lot of story about the the actual the theater in terms of your little uh, creative write-up but there's no reason why you couldn't edit it afterwards you put in the actual basic uh, outcome first and then you uh, fill in the results later into well not the results the actual story and the explanation based on the, the the theater and and that would make it a bit more interesting in terms of the combined army players and the pano players actually having their high stakes battles on the actual right location Anyway, I digress. Let's get into the game. I was playing against uh, my buddy Garth. He was playing Yu Ching. Of course, we were playing on Stig Tier 1. Uh, we, we agreed that whoever um, managed to um, uh, win the game would choose the theatre, and I was the winner of this game. So here's an overview of the battlefield. We're playing Engineering Deck. Um, this is a, a great mission to go second, but 
you can win without going second because uh, there, there's more than one way to win. Um, what we did here is we had these uh, towers with this gangplank walkway overview of the battlefield. Obviously the central room is uh, infinitely high and I've got my combined, combined army set up around here. You can sort of see there's a shrouded, um, there's a Krakot renegade who's rolled the, um, uh, the, the first level of metachemistry where he's got plus one armor and a uh, bioimmunity. Uh, the Imetron comes on automatically at the side of the table based on the scenario, special rule. We've got a Preta, we've got a uh, uh, Ikadron, and not an Ikadron, or an Ardrone. This is a, a Doctor Worm here. We've got uh, the Ardrone there, so the Q drone there. The Ardrone, where is he? I think the Ardrone is back here. Okay, so we've got Mark Rip on the building prone, Datrats in the building prone. There's another Datrats behind there. Um, Ikadron, Ikadron, oh, and a Unijon, and there's um, a model here which is my Nexus. And in hidden deployment, we've also got a Noctifier at this point here. So we'll just go through that in a bit more detail. So here's the left-hand side flank. You've got the Shrouded, you've got the Krakot, you've got the Ardrone and a Preta. Uh, in the middle, we've got the Q-Drone and the Dr. Worm. Um, the building, which is swarming with aliens, uh, at the top prone, we've got the uh, Mark Rip with the two Dutch rats there ready to support them with smoke. Uh, Preta over here, uh, Ikadron, Nexus, Unidron, and this in this little corner here, we've got the hidden, hidden um, what do we call it, missile launcher Noctifer. So this is a, a side-on view. You can see that uh, the two towers uh, in each deployment zone are connected, but there's also a way around the side, and you can see my HVT down the bottom. Um, on his side, let's get out the drawing pen. Let's pick a different color. Let's go for some green. So we've got a Shaolin. This is HVT over here. He's hidden the Guilang Fort Observer on the building closer to where my shrouded is. Uh, there's the Guangxi. We've got a Shangji hacker, assault hacker. We've got the Celestial Guard over here. Move my camera out of the way. Um, Celestial Guard control device. There's a flash pulse bot. There's another Guangxi at the back. So just spreading out along the deployment zone. Then, um, okay, so you can see a bit of a, a closer picture of his Guilang, just looking over here. He might be wanting to go for my console later in the game, but um, hopefully the Predator can take him out first. And uh, the back of the table. So, um, more importantly, you can actually see there's a Wuming missile, a heavy rocket launcher, I should say, with some um, other Kuangxi hanging around the building. Okay, uh, what's first? So, uh, this is the hidden location of my Noctifer, by the way. So, uh, Eugene going first, uh, we've got the Sien with HMG as the reserve model, and uh, we've got the heavy rocket launcher up the top here, just hanging out, uh, doesn't have any targets at the moment, but standing up. Uh, this picture was just shown to, uh, to, to, to point out where the uh, Quang Shi have been moving. Um, on his side, uh, yeah, so just impetuous troops moving out really. So now we've got the Shangji hacker trying to move over to pick up this console because there's not much killing for him to do. All my guys are in hiding, so he's just going to move over in here and start pressing the button. Um, Shaolin Monk puts out the smoke template first because he is aware that I do have an Octifier somewhere or, or suspects it. So he's just getting the smoke down first before he comes around too many corners. But successfully, the uh, the Shangji does manage to pick up the objective. Note that this is a Xian warrior converted to be a Shangji, so it's not actually quite the right model. Uh, and then pulls into some total cover nearby, we'll set up suppression fire later. Um, elsewhere, he's really just moving with his Quangxi behind some total cover. Really not achieving very much this turn, he's not even picking up the other objective. I'm not too sure if he has a, uh, a specialist nearby that can do that. And uh, we've got Fairy Dust going down from the Celestial Guard. Um, really boring turn actually. Um, Flash Pulse guy just hanging out to take care of this very thin um, thin fire lane, this arrow fire lane here. So straight into Combined Army turn, we're moving around with the Preta on the right hand flank and um, what I had to do here is I had to spend two orders to prevent the Datrats from using a Petuus. Reason for that is that there is a, um, a Wu Ming over here where the arrow is pointing and if the Datrites stands up and moves along here what happens is that a, a rocket comes down and puts a template around there and potentially uh, scraps this guy in the same ARO so I, I couldn't afford that what I did is I held them back with two orders then spend an order on this guy here uh, putting the smoke grenade down as we can see in the picture and that results in the Macrep having a smoke cloud to take out this um, Wooming over here after several orders spent, managed to wound him and he fails a guts check and goes into cover. So not ideal, would have preferred to kill him, but didn't quite manage to achieve that. So, what happened?
happens next. Uh, you can see now, um, using a, co a coordinated order to move out the uh, Dr. Worm over here to take this console, which he does successfully, the Q drone is now moved into position just to get uh, a fire lane along this, um, this this area, especially now that the worming's been been damaged. And of course, the, the Mark Rep goes back to being prone again, because we don't really want to leave him up there for the worming to shoot at. Although, to be fair, I could have actually just left him there, because uh, the worming now has to fend off the Q drone if he stands up, but it's better prone because the, the women can crawl along the wall and stand up in a position where the Q drone can't see him, and also he may have had other models in hidden deployment like Hacktow um, HMG. So we've moved the now that the objective has been taken for um, combined, I've moved the Doctor Woman to the corner here uh, because if he does survive to the next turn, he might be able to go inside the building or take the enemy console on that side. On the other flank, we've got a picture of my um, Preter actually hanging onto the side of the building here with his arm. Um, <laughs> but he's got climbing plus, so that's literally his position. The camera marker decides not to respond, so what we do next is we move around and reveal him with an intuitive attack, and uh, this manages to go the way of the Preta, does kill the Guilang, and uh, later on able to get a classified. The Preta on the other side of the table just climbing onto the building, just getting somewhere where he can't really be attacked by the Quangxi straight away, and he'll be useful a bit later on. So, um, on the other side, left hand flank, extreme prejudice is achieved from the corpse of the Guilang. Um, there is a Quangxi moving out in the uh, Yujing turn, and we're using the laser pointer just to see that there's actually a line between the Quangxi and the spot that the, um, the Doctor Worm is hiding. So the Doctor Worm shoots at him but misses, and the Quangxi also misses, so not too much to achieve there. It's outside of 16. Um, Quangxi moving up the stairs but doesn't clear the silhouette height level here to actually hit the uh, Q drone. Uh, Q drone, by the way, is positioned there where that box is. Um, note also that further up here there um, was a mark rep, but I, we did go prone with the mark rep, so never mind that. Uh, elsewhere, the Quangxi has to actually climb up the stair, up the up the the ramp, and just basically. Uh, take an arrow from the Preter for free, otherwise he has to spend an order restraining him. So the Preter goes for an engage and I think fails, so um, nothing comes of that, and the other um, Impetuous just move closer to the wall. We now have a camo marker are moving out. Um, my opponent's used the ninja silhouette, so it looks like a camo ninja, but this is looks going to be deceiving. It's just a TO camo marker, so it could be anything. What he does is he advances to this point here on the battlefield, note that there is a Q drone down here which is being able to shoot along this line, and we also have the, um, the Dr. Worm here. What he does is he pokes around the corner and um, has a, an engagement attempt with the Q drone. It turns out he is using a Hacktow Killer Hacker, not an HMG. So the distance between the Q drone and this guy here is 17 inches, which bodes ill for the hack tower because he's up against range and cover. So he's hitting on something like nines? No, I think it's less than that. Uh, blister skill 14, minus for range, minus for cover, three dice on nines, and I'm shooting back. Starting blister skill 11, a plus minus for range uh, and cover. Minus six for surprise uh, uh, to and minus three for surprise shots. So I'm I'm, I'm critting on twos and initially, but it's going to go up to fives on the second round. Um, I had criminally forgotten to put um, enhanced fire on him with my lieutenant's order from the uh, the Nexus hacker. So that was really stupid, but uh, that's how it worked out. Um, notice that um, if I was to reveal the Noctifer at this point to fire the missile. He comes around the corner as a camo marker, so I'd have to respond by delaying with my camo marker, and as soon as he sees me bringing out a second ARO, he may as well just go back into cover and not attack. So I was hoping to use the, the second volley um, to bring out the Noctifier once he's revealed himself, but he decided not to fire at me again. What happens instead here is he's going to use the um, the Sien Warrior. So let's look at a different side of the table. We're now moving in with the Shaolin Monk to throw a smoke grenade here so the Sien can cut, it, cut across this way. Let's have a look at how this works out. So the smoke grows down successfully, then the Sien Warrior moves out along the, um, along the street and is able to get line of fire to the Q drone. You can sort of see here, this is where the Sien Warrior is. Just move the camera. 
and uh, there's a fire line long through to here to our friend the Q drone. Turns out it's within six, uh, 36 inches, and there's a smoke cloud, of course, uh, right here, if you guys can't see on the photo. So what happens is that he shoots at me. I'm needing eight to hit on four dice, because plus three for range, minus six for, for the th shooting back through smoke, and I roll an eight to get a crit. So super unlucky for the Sien Warrior. But um, after he moves back into cover and shoots at me again, the Q drone does die leaving him on one wound no less. So you can sort of see the positioning here, um, once again moving the camera. So the Shaolin's put the smoke down, we're just using a silhouette marker to show where he's moved out to because he wants to stay within 36, now he's pulling back into the cover and looking good. Um, note that he's backed up the stairs a little bit and um, he doesn't really want to sort of have a go at the Preta because the Preta could just chain rifle him and he's only got one wound left. So the Quangxi moves in instead and um, this turns out to be a, a close combat fight that neither of them wins initially, so a bit of a stalemate, unfortunately. Okay, so um, weighing up his options, with only a few orders left, he does decide to come down the stairs and come behind this total cover here to avoid the Preta somewhat, turn around and go into suppression fire. So you can see there's his trail of blood uh, following behind him too. Um, so here's the uh, the ending position. You can see he's in the middle here. He's got suppression fire just facing backwards. So if the Predator does come back down the stairs or if these guys come around here, they're going to get shot at. But we have, only have to strip one wound off him. Elsewhere, the Hacktow has gone into suppression fire as well, just in case people come after him. Um, and uh, yeah, everybody else just moving out a little bit. We've got the, um, the the hacker coming up a bit closer to the objective room. He might need to be there for later. I mean, we've only got one turn left for Yu Cheng, so they've got a lot to achieve. Only scored one uh, console so far. So when it comes to my turn, um, the Krakot Renegade uses its impetuous move to just move out straight into the line of fire. Note at this point, guys, that um, this is within 8 inches for the, the small template. So uh, we've got a, a Shaolin in the background which can lob a smoke grenade down here and if he passes, any future attempts to kill the Sien aren't going to be very good because the smoke grenade's going to be there, the Sien warrior can see through the smoke, I can't. The Sien warrior has a few options, can suppression fire with the HMG, can nanopulsar, or can dodge. So um, because he has to declare first and goes for the suppression fire, um, I simply choose to fire both barrels, both rounds of the, the chest mines to try and strip the last wound off him. He had forgotten that I was able to do that and later decided that he would have dodged. But think about this though, if he had dodged, um, the Krakok can suppression fire, can not suppression fire, just shoot a submachine gun needing 11s to hit. Um, pretty decent chance of winning the face-to-face -face roll and cracking that. Um, the only thing about that though is that um, he has to get that wound um, straight away, otherwise the smoke goes down and then nothing happens. Um, having said that though, if the smoke goes down and the Krakot um, moves forward with some chest mines remaining, then the Sien Warrior has to respond with 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 something or rather, like maybe a dodge, um, but if he does shoot back at the Krakot, then the, he just uses the templates through the, the smoke. And um, if if he just keeps dodging, the Krakot will get into close combat, in which case it's all over for the Sien Warrior because he can use the chest mines uh, to berserk, which um, adds a huge bonus and makes it very likely to kill the Sien. So the Sien was in a pretty bad spot there, all things considered. Elsewhere, um, we've got a, another smoke grenade coming down in response to this um, this other suppression fire model, which is the Hacktow. So with the smoke down, it's going to allow the uh, the Dajratze to move around like this until he gets around to here, and then go around the corner of this thing into close combat, if you guys can see what my plan is there. Um, the other Krakot, unfortunately, not the Krakot, the Dajratze, starts here, and the closest model is over here. And there's like a cliff there, so this is the first time I've done this in Unif Infinity, but he has to actually jump. It's, it is the quickest way, the least number of orders to get over there. So he jumps and dies. First time I've actually had to deal with that, but that's why you don't deploy impetuous models at the top of the building, by the way, guys. So, well, well. Um, elsewhere, the Preta moves in to fight the, um, fight the, uh, the Quangxi, who just dodges. The Flash Pulse bot um, blinds our poor Preta here, so nothing becomes of that. Uh, we have the Mark Rep, which is now moving up. The the uh, the, wo the Wooming has gone prone over here, so no more Wooming. But the Mark Rep is able to move out along here. 
and um, fire some bullets down on the hack tower if needed, but I initially involved him in a uh, coordinated order, pl planning on doing that, but then I realized it's better to just go in close combat with the the Datcher outside, it's more reliable than trying to shoot at a guy who's in, in cover and suppression fire mode. So that ended up not really going ahead. You can sort of see elsewhere though that, um, okay, so the Sand Warrior was over here, got taken out. Um, the coordinated order is moving this uh, the Shrouded over to this objective here, so that's the plan with that. Um, the Doctor Worm is moving in this direction, so he can move over to here. The other classified is Test Run, so if I can repair my Q-Dron, then that's great, but I also get a Classified, and the Dark Chirats are moving here with the coordinated order. Um, the thing about this coordinator order is that the Dr. Worm has forgotten that there's a uh, Quangxi like there, so the Quangxi actually shoots from here to here, and um, I can't believe I'm saying this, actually kills the, the Dr. Worm because I lose the shootout. So a bit unlucky there, but really just stupid of me to involve the, um, involve the, the Dr. Worm in that coordinated order before removing the Quangxi somehow, so that was just, that was just bad play by me, it was just dumb. Um, okay. So the Shrouded now uh, re uh, re reveals, even, so he can actually shoot at the Shaolin Monk, uh, does eliminate him, and successfully presses the button, and goes back into camo mode. So a very successful turn from our friend the Shrouded. Uh, now we have the uh, the Datchirats, they're just moving in and throwing a smoke grenade at this point, ready to actually engage the uh, the hack tower, and then gets into close combat with him. Starts swinging at him, does a wound, uh, run out of orders, um, so at least he's tied up for next turn, but my opponent will have the option of shooting into close combat. So here we are, um, also the Nexus uh, has moved out behind here. The reason I'm doing this is that um, I may run out of specialists if he kills my specialists, so I want to bring my one of my more important specialists closer to the objective, just so there'll be few orders in the final remaining turn to get to the, the objective room. And you have to think ahead, guys, you have to set up these plays. Um, quite a good uh, habit to have in Infinity. Okay, and also <laughs> we've got the, um, the Quangxi moving in and being engaged by the Preta, so hugs all around. So, um, what's happened really is that my opponent um, has lost his lieutenant. The Sien Warrior was the lieutenant. I'm not a big fan of his list because you kind of want to use the Sien Warrior to kill things, and if if you are unlucky, like he was in this game, and takes a crit, then if you lose your lieutenant, you've got a small army which can't really come back from that, so it's a bit rough. So I'd prefer him to actually just have a like a like a home base lieutenant or even chain of command. What happens here though is he's trying to use the Wooming to shoot a rocket into close combat. <coughs> Excuse me, had to sneeze. Um, the reason he wants to shoot into close combat is it gives him the chance to move the hack tower into the room if he's really lucky. But what happens is that the missile, even though it hits the Datrat, so not the hack tower. Um, that tried to pass the armor save incredibly, so that plan didn't work, and he's got no extra orders to spend on that. The other thing he can try and do is move close to the door with the um, the celestial guard, spend the one remaining order he's generated from a command token to open it, and then move into the room with the Shang Ji. So that's exactly what we attempt to do, opening this up, moving around. Um, finally, the Noctifer appears because he's moved onto the top of this um, this crate with his celestial guard. So the Noctifier fires a missile. And he misses, even though he's been waiting all game, he's been aiming for the entire game, ends up missing. So that was kind of dumb. Um, and yeah, we've got Pretas attacking Quangxi, and that's pretty much it. So it's basically game over, um, because I've got two consoles to his, and I've got the final turn, and I don't really need to achieve anything. Very frustrating, though, that there was no opportunity for me to land the Fractar anywhere. So the Fractar's just wasted points this game. He comes in on the side and at least nets me some, uh, nets me an extra point in terms of the classified that turns into an HVT capture. So there is that at least. And uh, we've got Miranda Ashcroft representing a Nexus who moves closer to the room, but we find out that the Shangji who's in the room is a hacker, and I forget to put a nullifier down. Um, so he hacks me, and the lieutenant uh, doesn't even get into the room. Um, the Shrouder tries to move in here and kill the, the Shangji, but there's a saturation zone and um, he can't remove him. The point of this is that I get three extra points if the if this model removes this model and I'm left with the only guy in the room at the end with the more points. So um, that was it. Shrouder has a go at it, fails miserably, but um, end up ended up being an easy game after the Sien Warrior went down. Um, I would like to say that uh, this Yujing list could have been better for a couple of reasons I mentioned. I, I don't like to take more than more than two or three heavy infantry. 
when it comes to uh, vanilla Yu Ching, I like to take a lot of smaller stuff, the, the ninja hacker, the guilang, um, a lot of sort of smaller robots and things like that, the peripheral stuff. But I'm um, enjoying combined. This uh, this list is not bad. It's just that you've got to find opportunities for the fractal and the Noctify. Otherwise, you're place, basically playing the whole game like 60 points down. So I might try some lists which are just a bit more direct, have less hidden deployment, and are, are more about like just getting a lot of efficiency out of the combined army list because they've got a lot of really efficient models. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. Please do click the video description and check out my bat rep on the website and also with the lists there.